Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to go over a little bit of how to lay out the board, how to look at it, and make sure you're putting it the way the layout is done. Uh, if you've been following this build, I did build a layout for it already, and this is the layout diagram. I will always be kind of looking from here to here. One of the things that was a bit annoying is I messed up in my layout and accidentally um, did some things wrong. Then I realized it later and fixed it, but when I sent it into Doug, I forgot to hit save, so it didn't save the changes. So I got a board that's a little weird. I had to pull one out here, if you look there. There's an extra set, I think, here or here that are extra that I don't need, and I think this one's extra as well. So, you know, it's a refinement process. If I was to build another one now, I'd have the corrected build that's like this. This will probably shut off on me a lot, but the bigger point is that I look from here to here and figure out what I'm doing and how. So as a classic example, we see these big high watt resistors on the bottom. I also tend to put the resistors on first and then go to the capacitors but you can kind of do it whichever way you want. But the reason I do that is it's better when you see two like this. I like having the capacitor on the top and the resistor on the bottom because resistors usually don't need to be changed, but capacitors do. So uh, one other thing I haven't done yet that I'll do before I solder these, and today I'm just gonna put it together, I'll disassemble it later, is you'll see certain spots where there's wires between posts. I will be soldering those together as well uh, at some point later, uh, you know, in these different points, before I put anything inside of those in because you need those done first, just because they sit at the bottom out of the way and they just make that junction for you. Um, so at any time if you're looking at these kind of layouts, if you don't know what it is, you can also refer to the schematic and the way you would look at that is generally, for example, this is our first preamp tube. You can see this black wire is going to these two. This would be the, if you look, you'd have to look up what pin three was and in this case that's the cathode. That comes down to a, a 22 microfarad 50 volt and a resistor. Now, if you don't know the color bands, this one's actually 3.3K, but if you don't know the color bands, you can then look up on the, on the schematics. You can always refer schematic to this and back. And you should be able to kind of figure that out, and that's something that takes a little time and practice, but that's how I do that. So, ultimately, though, um, <clears throat> I'll just kind of start on the bottom, this bottom rail of power resistors. I've got a couple of them, and I noticed that one of them has kind of a, they're both the same looking almost, except one is, if I remember right, 10K, one's 100K. And the big difference there is if you see here, there's a yellow here and an orange here, and I have a yellow here and an orange here. So this one will come down here. And you just have to take that time to carefully look at each of these, line them up, and then once you put them all in, you solder them in place. I'm just gonna touch that to keep it awake. Same with this one, I will put this one here. And you just kind of repeat this process. Um, the, uh, you know, I'm not gonna necessarily spend the time on every single one, but uh, you wanna make sure that you are very carefully looking at each one. I know that, for example, this first one is a 3.3K, uh, or 3K on the original schematic, but they just don't make 3.3, or they don't make 3K um, resistors anymore, they're mostly 3.3. So I've got a 3.3 here that I'll put in, and then I line it up with an associated capacitor, which I would probably go back and do later, but I'm just kind of trying to show you the general process of what I go through. So then I have, as I mentioned, it's stacked. If this cap, this electrolytic cap ever goes bad, I'd pull it. You'd also have to know I've got the positive end here, and in this case, they will show you on it what the positive end is, but it also has a little dimple, and I don't know if that's very clearly visible, but that little dimple, it's similar, this is a big one to show you. They have a dimple at the top for the positive end, and they'll also quite often have a positive on them or some kind of a sign of what positive and negative are. So in this case, I'll know by the schematic that this is going to ground. So the, this is the cathode coming down through a resistor and a cathode bypass cap to ground, and that's what that is. So you just, it's, this is all part of understanding the general flow of things. Um, so I could go through and put all these in. You know, it, it, we're not gonna cover every bit of it, but for example, here's a couple of the uh, capacitors that were the big ones, um, as, I, as I recall. Uh, and then this one, it was somewhere over in, in here. I don't remember exactly where, but you know, I can go and pull these up. This one was here, if I remember correctly. Uh, so you, and then uh, additionally, this one was the next cathode bypass cap, and it would have a resistor under it, etc. So you install all these, and then this is, um, if we look back at the, um, there's a 750 picofarad cap right here. I got the wrong one, so I can't solder this anyway, but that one goes kind of roughly uh, between the resistor and there, so it goes kind of like this as well. So, uh, and then another thing in general to understand, of course, you're going to have to just make sure you're carefully putting all of the right values in the right places, and one of the things I'll do afterwards is go and take my own meter, and check the resistance. And all I have to do is once it solders, I touch, you do want to touch the turrets, not the solder, because that's proof that these connection is going through, all the way through, and gives you a real reading, you know, so. But uh, ultimately, before you put them on as well, you should take a second to double check if you're not sure. And you don't want to put the wrong values in or you'll end up potentially with something wrong. Uh, another thing that I've got here is, um, the original design I was thinking, this 220 ohm resistor was going to be more like one of these smaller ones, and so I had a very, very small, uh, and so what I'm going to have to do is kind of bend these back. But the good thing is it allows me to push it a little bit away because these tend to radiate heat and that gives it a little bit of separation from the other components so it can radiate off heat. 
I had initially designed also to have these and the large, so this is the two 1.5K, 20 watts. I thought I could fit them on here, but they're not gonna fit well for two reasons. One, you need to really put these against something like the chassis to cool them off. And then this one as well is gonna go down lower with these power caps and be kind of linked in with one of those. But um, these are the power filtering capacitors and two of them will be even before we get to this point. One is over here. Yeah, that's right, tipped over, sorry about that. And this one will be kind of connected here, and then the subsequent ones would be another one over here. Uh, you know, I don't remember off the top of my head exactly. I think it might be that one of them, uh, so one's at A, one's at B, one's at C, and one's at D. So we basically have one off the board, another one off the board, or connecting in here roughly, and then another one connecting in here, and then the final one connecting over here. So those do all this power filtering, and the good thing is that each subsequent capacitor filters the power a little more. So you know that the power amp stage, when we're hitting these power tubes, we're a lower capacitant, I mean, we're, we're, we've only had a couple of uh, layers of filtering at that point. But by the time we get to the phase inverter, we add another one. And then by the time we get down to the preamp tubes, we've added another one. So we just get a really clean filtered power for those first stages of the preamp. And then we're not as worried about the earlier stages. So that's just kind of a quick snapshot of how I put them together. One thing we may end up doing here is uh, slow filming, or you know, filming me actually soldering together and then speed it up so people can watch that. Just not sure how interested people will be in that. But... Uh, I've almost got all the parts together now as well. I'm just waiting on, I need to get, uh, I have to get that replacement for this one that was wrong. I have to get a couple of transformers and uh, I think I need one more too. I think we show, we're gonna show in this video all the components I've gotten as well. And so uh, I'm getting very close and then we'll put this thing together. Hopefully let everybody have a chance to give it a listen. Okay, hello everybody again. I'm uh, Now I'm gonna actually do, as I mentioned before, I was showing off just the general process about putting together. I'm gonna show you how I wire together these bridge positions that are supposed to be wired together. Uh, and, and how that will work. Um, it's pretty straightforward on a small board like this, but we're going to take a minute and we're just going to go through the process. So uh, I'll do, I'm not going to do all of them on the video, but I want to show you a couple of them. You know, I'm going to do these top two up here uh, and what I do with that. So for example, I know I want to do this first one. Uh, I'll, it's not the first knot, you know, or the first turret, I should say, but this, uh, the second and third one. So these two will be joined. So I'm just going to strip off a little bit of wire. You can also buy bus wire. There's a lot of different kinds of ways you can accomplish it, but let me uh, quickly show you how I'm going to do it with this one. So I'll just strip off a small bit of wire. And, sure enough, I can then get a pair of pliers. I like to get a small, just a little bit there, and turn it on the end. It creates the hook part. Oh, of course I won't let, let me do that now. So, now I've got that. I can come across, lock it in. And then what I'd like to do, and I learned this also from Doug, he's got some great information on his board, is I, I wind it around, and then keep winding it and then come back around. So you get kind of a, a crossways across both of those and then you snip the line. Um, I don't have my snips with me, of course. Um, so I will try and see if I can get this across enough to do so. I'll go get my snips to continue, but so as you see there, you can then use the pliers to tighten everything down. And then the first thing you really want to do is it really should be a good physical connection. So we're gonna, you get your um, multimeter, set it to continuity mode, which should beep when you make continuity, and then you just touch it between the two turrets. And that means I'm getting good continuity. I will go back later and touch a little bit of solder on either side of those as well. That's just to make sure that we can't move during vibrations and whatnot. But we have a solid physical connection, and you can also kind of push that down with a little piece of, of your pliers or whatever. So effectively, that's that. Uh, I'm going to take a short break while I go get snips, and then I'll be able to continue to show you how this works. Okay, so resuming. I have my snips now. So now I'm going to, like I did, I did one and then two and three were done and then I'm gonna skip another one and then do two more. So this one needs to be skipped and then these two. So I'll be doing this this one. I'm gonna need a little bit more strip, so I'll strip even more. But again, usually this is the, probably the less favorite way of doing it. A lot of people will tend to buy wire that's pre-done, uh, already stripped, but it's kind of expensive. But this way, it takes a little bit more manual labor but doesn't cost you as much in the long run. So go ahead and do that one. And I also have to keep going back to my tablet as I go, but. You get that nice curl in, skip one, hook it in, come around, loop back, and over, and now I can just snip it right there, and then pinch it over, and voila, done. Or the, as the same friends, voila. Um, and you want to, again, try and make sure you get good physical contact with everything because later on down the road, things can vibrate and move, 
and even solder socket joints will eventually kind of go bad. But if I now do my test for continuity again, if I just touch between the two turrets, I have continuity. A good test of continuity also when you're putting components together is to not test specifically on the turret only, but say I had a, a, a long thing in between here, I want to make sure if I was making continuity between this, say this air resistor here over to the other side of the capacitor, is to test on the leads because then you're testing the solder joint between these two as well. Uh, so there's a lot of little things like that you should be careful of and think about when you're doing it. So, a little. And there we go, there you have it. Slide that down. Another good connection, we'll double check. And, good to go. So what I'm gonna do is stop the recording, finish the last few, and then show this as it's done. Okay, I found a, a boo-boo in my design here, and this was actually, I was already aware that I've had an error here. I messed up on the board design. This is right, but the problem is this is not. I had been doing the editing when I was coming up with this, and I thought I'd saved some changes in Doug's software, but it had a big red flag that I missed that said, you can't save this yet, even though it was cool that it saved the state of what I'd last done. He wouldn't let me save it in his software unless I had met the minimum number of rivet or turrets in his thing. So I had thought that I had ordered the right piece, and it turned out I had it wrong. So I talked to Doug about it. He helped me figure out that I basically hadn't hit save yet on the last edit. So this was a previous edit. Uh, there's a couple of things that are you'll hopefully be able to see here. So you can see these two are joined here. Those are the correct two. But these two are now completely extra and not needed, and I removed those. I also uh, messed up. This is supposed to be a little lot further down on this one, and so I can't run a ground wire through those because that is not supposed to be ground. That goes off to the treble. So that would normally be maybe a down about here. I also have this one extra. That's probably what that one really was supposed to be. But, you know, again, this was just me when I was experimenting and learning how to use the software. I did it wrong. So, uh, and then the final thing. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to jumper either between, you know, this guy over this ground wire or this guy over this ground wire. I don't know which. Probably the shorter one will be better. So I'll put an underboard jumper wire that will just kind of connect those two like that. And then solder that in as well. Uh, I'm not going to do that now because I'm going to do it with smaller wire uh, and I'm going to leave, you want to leave the backing wire still on it so it almost be something you'll see kind of like this between the two with just a piece of jumper wire. But ultimately, um, everything else now is ready. I've tested continuity. Things are coming across well, so I'll you know, end up soldering that up. And I'm going to probably do a video where I show soldering some of the components in now that you've seen how that's laid out. But uh, uh, there we go. We're, uh, you know, getting closer. Things are progressing along pretty well. You'll always make mistakes, you just have to learn to recover from them. Uh, I could have actually just ordered a new board, uh, but I'm sure this one's going to work fine for me. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, learning. One of the things that I had before, is you see I'm showing these 1K, uh, 1.5K 20 waters. I had had them on the board here, as I also was going to try and put the big 20 water, but I realized I needed those in a different location anyway, so it didn't work. So, you know, a couple of extra uh, parts over here that aren't even needed on the circuit as well, because they won't fit very well, because they're, they're, they, these need to be down on the board to cool. Uh, Etc. So, um, you know, as I would, you know, this would be my Rev 1 of the board, if you would call it. And if I was to build another amp, I would make the Rev 2 fix some of the problems I've had with this one, etc. But I, I may not really be building another board of this type. So, uh, unless others are interested in building one, and then I can, you know, make sure that the particular one is available. Uh, once I get it refined and fixed, Doug would be able to let other people grab that one and use it if that's what people were interested in building for themselves. So, at any rate, uh, there you go. That's the bus wire done. Uh, again, I'll solder all these points in and then we'll be good to go for the next stage, which is connecting in all the resistors and capacitors. Keep your amp bias hot and keep the jams coming.